Hi everyone, this is Ankur from FinStudy Club. Now having looked at the balance sheet consolidation, it is a uh, right time to look at the consolidation of the income statement, you know, at the parent level. And, you know, honestly, it's the second consolidation that we are looking at. So a lot of rules are going to be common as far as, you know, the uh, movement from second stage to the third stage is concerned. What you have to just keep in mind is the overall design of this consolidation, which is at T0, if the acquisition happens, it's only the income statement after T0 that, you know, is there a question of being consolidated. So let's say after consolidation, a year has gone by and at T1, there is another set of financial statements that you'll have to prepare, which obviously will include balance sheet stroke income statement. So it is this income statement, which is a year after the acquisition, which is in context here. Okay. So the previous, the income statement previous to the date of acquisition is not relevant as far as this particular consolidation is concerned. So like the, you know, pedagogy we have been following, we are not going to look at each point, you know, uh, on, on a line by line basis here, uh, as been written on the slide, we are going to take up an example. And after that, we are going to look at these points, if at all, there is any need be. What I want you to just kind of note here is that you got to subtract the minority interest after calculating PAT. Now, this is something that I'm not explaining again, you know, uh, at this moment, but maybe, you know, we'll just wait for the right opportune time to kind of explain this point. So here is a practice question. This is going to be like a pretty easy thing. There is an income statement, the standalone income statement for the parent and a standalone income statement for the subsidiary. What I've also done is to compare how are, you know, the three methods, you know, stack up against each other, the equity method, whereas there was significant influence, the full consolidation, which is a matter of discussion right now. And there is something called as proportionate consolidation, which we haven't really touched upon as a concept, you know, as much, although principally we have, you know, and we're going to talk about that also. Now, the acquisition is 60%. So if it is not 100%, then obviously there is something called as minority interest that comes up. And therefore, it's going to come in this case. Also, it happened on 1st January 2016 at the beginning of the year, I have to prepare a consolidated income statement at the year end. So at T0, the acquisition has happened and at T1 is where the income statement is being prepared. So for this year, we have to basically talk about the consolidation. The rules are fairly simple as far as full consolidation is concerned. Actually not simple. I should say similar to the balance sheet consolidation, which is whatever are the values of the parent, you have to 100% include the value of the subsidiary. Now, again, ideally, I should have included only 60%, but I am including 100%. I will have to give credit of this extra 40% to whom? To someone called as my minority. Simple, the same logic. So I'm going to, you know, just look at all the figures here. Parent COGS and 100% of subsidiary COGS, interest expense, the parent's income expense and 5,000 of subsidiary's income statement. So overall, if you look at it, it is 20,000 and 10,000 at an operating level. So total as a group and Thinking that I own 100% of the subsidiary, I both of us put together have earned 30,000 is what this row tells me. Obviously, it's a full consolidation, so there is no question of the equity income. So the total income of the group is 30,000. Out of which 10,000 belongs to someone of which I do not own 40%. So I will have to pay off this 4,000 to minority and the income to the parent is going to be only 26. Let's see how would I have uh, accounted if it was an equity method. What is an equity method? Remember in equity method, there would have been a situation of significant influence in which the moment my associate declares profit, I recognize 
the proportionate profit into my equity income I do not add on a line by line basis so it is only the parents income and details that kind of come up equity income whatever is a proportionate 6026 nothing goes out of minority and therefore 26 is the parents or stroke the investors net income so do you see the 20 26,000 is a similar number that you finally giving to the parents credit now what happens in a proportionate consolidation is actually a hybrid of the two you consolidate on a line by line basis but you do not talk about the full value you are just talking about at a 60% so therefore there is nothing called as minority that is going to come up now and there is also nothing called as equity income that's going to come up because you are including every element on a line by line basis equity income will come up only in case where the final PAT is to be considered but when you're considering line by line which is the case of consolidation either proposed or full either proportionate or full then the proportionate profit 10,000 into 60 percent which is in form of equity income is not going to arise here Okay, so we do either of the two we are not doing both of them so in proportionate consolidation I have my figures the parents figure and rather than having 100% of the subsidiary I consider only 60% what belongs to me so 60% of 75 is 45 60% 60 of 60,000 is 36 and 3,000 here so the number that I am getting is 20 plus 6 I am getting a number of 26 and 26 here so do you see that the parents net income is exactly the same what I want you to just pay attention is to this fact okay and in this context I would like to take you back to the mega example on balance sheet that we had done and wherein we had said that the consolidated net asset is 41 you know 667 out of which the parents equity is this red box of 40 and the minority interest is of 1667 okay now I want to just combine the two concepts I'm standing at T0 the parent equity is 40,000 minority interest appearing in my books is one six six seven now during the year okay and that's going to give me the total number as a single position t1 now during the year how much have I added to the parent 26 and how much am I adding to the minority 4000 so by the end of the year my parents equity is going to become 60 my minority is going to become 5667 and in the consolidated balance sheet to be prepared at the year end my consolidated equity is going to be this much is going to be this much so that's how the income statement consolidation if you look at the total level the total as a group we are earning 30 total as a group we were so on and so forth and we can talk about at a total level as well so sometimes it is pretty confusing